in the Velarde versus the Canadian National Railroad case, uh, we were hired uh, the day after the crash occurred. A train traveling 50 miles an hour uh, approached a crossing where the gates and lights weren't working. The railroad knew the gates and lights weren't working. Uh, and yet a dispatcher erroneously radioed to the approaching train and told the conductor that the gates and lights had been working. Uh, so instead of that train stopping at the crossing and doing what is commonly called the stop and flag procedure where the train literally stops at the crossing because the gates and lights aren't working, a conductor gets out of the train and they literally walk the train across the tracks at one miles an hour uh, after all cars have stopped. That train came barreling through at 50 miles an hour, struck an SUV and pushed the vehicle several hundred feet down the tracks and my client sustained horrible brain injuries. We were hired the day after the collision and were able to immediately file the lawsuit and get in front of a judge two days after the crash and ask that judge to enter a protective order on all the evidence that we didn't have access to but the railroad had access to. And after that order was entered, we were able to get the evidence that proved that the railroad knew the crossing gates and lights weren't working. In fact, we were able to get the dispatch tape that would have been destroyed within a couple days that proved that that dispatcher erroneously gave the information to the conductor that the gates and lights were working when in fact they weren't working. And that case went to trial uh, a year to the day after the crash occurred after I personally took 50 to 60 depositions in that year and got the case to trial uh, when the railroad uh, should have settled the case, they didn't, and we were able to obtain a $55 million verdict.